Hey, so there's been a lot of chatter around large language models. Some people are anxious about them, some derisive, some love them and some don't understand them at all. With the rise of the AI influencer on LinkedIn, we at Art of Finance wanted to take you behind the curtain and explore some ways that we're thinking of applying large language models to research and for financial advisory. I'm Henry, I lead research here at Art of Finance and we're going to talk through how we view LLMs can make financial advisory smarter, more efficient, and support personalization. And again, I'll preface this by saying this is active research. This is really taking you along in the process with us because we've come to a point where we're really excited and we're, we're happy to share it. Uh, and so I'll dive right in. And what I'm seeing on the screen here is the initial chat interface to what we're calling the Arta LLM Advisor or internally ME 3.0. Uh, and to give some early context, how this came about was for our existing human financial advisors, there's quite an arduous process of connecting with the user, uh, conversing to understand basic financial attributes and build this suitability picture, which can then ultimately inform the more nuanced financial advisory. Given this, we viewed, hey, chat, LLMs, perfect combination, it's a great use case, and as we began to develop it, we realized there was actually an extensive application across LLMs, not just for our financial advisory, but even supporting the user interactions in the app. And so this is gonna be the first video in a series where we explore this research, the application, and walk you through some of the things that at least I'm personally really excited about. So again, I'm acting as if I'm a new user. I'm just coming into Arta. I haven't spoken with our advisors yet. It has no information about my background or financial situation. So it's asking a generic question. It's a little edgy, but uh, perhaps I'll say, I want to understand how to retire in 15 years. A couple key technical things to note, and we'll do more technical specific videos, but we have this streaming response, low latency. This was actually quite a lot of work for some of our teams. Uh, and so we can see to get started, it needs to build this initial information about me. So it's asking, what am I hoping to achieve? What does retirement look like for me? So I'd, like, I'd like to be able to live off my investment income. I currently work in tech and make 500 K a year. Maybe my boss will see this and actually give me a raise. Uh, and I don't own a home because that feels relevant for finances. Let it respond. Great. It wants to now dig into my financial situation. Something we tried really hard to capture was the ability for the advisor to allow it to be a user driven conversation. Uh, the real power of this is that it enables users to work extensively with an advisor in a way that's just not feasible with a human 24 seven across an entire set of clients. And so it's asking my net worth, excluding primary residency. Do I have any investments? So I can say I'm worth, maybe we'll be super generous and say $6 million. And I have a hundred K in fidelity perhaps. And so what I'll pause here to do is we can look on the right hand side and there's a little insight into what's happening uh, behind the scenes here. On the bottom, if I scroll down, what we're seeing is extracted out key attributes from the conversation as we progress. So you can see it pulled out things like primary income, obviously net worth, my retirement goal, existing investments, an important tidbit showing some basic second order reasoning is given my net worth and primary income, it correctly inferred that I was at least a qualified purchaser. And then this structured representation of the user's financial picture informs the derivation of scores across a set of pre-existing financial metrics that we worked with our human advisors to determine. And so you can see up here, we have metrics for risk, liquidity, time horizon, tax complexity, diversification, income. Each has a corresponding score from one to five, which is correlating to its importance to the user's ideal financial state given their current context. So a risk score of four is quite high. You can even scan over and see a little bit of uh, reasoning behind it. 
the UI is terrible right now because I've had to be the one that's primarily built it out. So you can imagine it'll get better over time. Um, and we'll dive in in later series into what's really going on behind the scenes here and how we can use that to derive the user's optimal financial profile across our Arda assets. Uh, and I'll wrap up here with, given this, and if I was scrolling, my first reaction and question would be, all right, cool, it's another application of large language models. Anyone can mock something together that looks interesting, uh, but really what's its differentiator? What's its value? And I think for us, this boils down to two key points. The first basic table stakes, the security and privacy. We at Art of Finance spent a lot of time very specifically ensuring that we're not leveraging closed source external models. Everything we see here is hosted and run off of our own internal uh, self-hosted models such that user data is kept secure. It's not sent off to external vendors. User data is not shared across other users, obviously. And more specifically, it's not used to train a model. Um, so there's no risk of leakage or information sharing. And the second is that how we view LLMs is a tool to support the process. While you could certainly go to any LLM and ask it to act as your financial advisor, and it would likely give you very reasonable responses, I think everyone's aware this isn't really the reality of large language models between the risk of hallucination versus false confidences, etc. cetera. Uh, we don't trust the LLM to be a financial advisor, but what we do trust the LLM for is extracting out and having a structured representation of the user's financial profile. So this is a super basic task for an LLM that it excels at. And then given the structured representation, we can use our traditional well-researched quantitative financial methods and processes to then derive the optimal portfolio in a mathematically provable way, which obviously a large language model telling you stock picks might get lucky, but it's at least not my personal investment thesis. And so again, we're really excited. This will be a series. Uh, stay tuned. There's lots to dive into uh, behind how this actually works. What are the complexities? How do we derive the portfolio and how is it relevant to the user? This will come up in future videos. So uh, I'm excited to continue this series and excited to continue to share how we at Art of Finance view large language models and how we're working to leverage them for our users. Thank you.